Hello, Kit Crown here, your mortgage consultant for life. Welcome to this week's Mortgage Moments video. I will have a new short video on a mortgage or financial fitness topic every week. So please make sure to follow my YouTube channel or visit the Mortgage Moments section on my website, kitcrown.com, for the latest video. Today I'm talking about cash. You know, that stuff that almost no one carries around anymore because it's so much easier to use a debit card or Venmo or Apple Pay or just about anything but cash. And yet, lots of people keep cash around the home because it's a great just-in-case-I-need-it safety net. I get it. It feels nice to have money that you can always put your hands on or that no one else knows about it. And while they may say that America runs on Duncan, it's all cash, baby. So, what could possibly be wrong with having a stash of cash? To understand this sensitive topic completely, we need to start with the shocking acknowledgement that there are people who are desperate enough to do just about anything to get their hands on money. And that makes real estate transactions really, really, really attractive because they involve lots and lots and lots of money. Over the course of decades of mortgage lending, the people who make the rules tumble to this fact the hard way with tens of thousands of loans that went into default because of one kind of fraud or another. Sometimes it turned out that borrowers had down payments or closing costs that came from unallowed sources. And in other cases, they learned that the transaction was a sham right from the start. Here are some of the key reasons why cash has ended up on the not okay list. It could be a kickback from the seller, real estate agent, or other party to the transaction to provide phony down payment or closing costs. The funds could be from an undisclosed loan, such as a credit card advance or a side deal with a friend. It might be an attempt to launder money that came from some illegal activity, such as drug sales. But these days, it also could come from some terrorist-sponsored activity, too. There's no end to the creative methods that the bad guys are willing to employ to make a real estate deal work or to get ill-begotten cash into the system. Here's one that came into view with the recent college admissions scandal, and while it doesn't involve cash per se, it shows you just how inventive people can get when it comes to real estate and fraudulent activity. One of the coaches who took a bribe sold his $500,000 home to one of the cheating parents for a million dollars. The parent then sold the house for $500,000, what it was really worth, and went on their merry way. It all looked completely legit on the surface until you realize that the coach took a bribe and, because of our tax laws, was able to get away without having to pay any taxes on that money either. The overarching idea that makes cash a no-no always is that it can't be traced back to its source. That means that the lender can't know for sure whether it was really money that you accumulated from emptying all of those piggy banks, banks that you filled up over the years, or if the seller handed you an envelope with a bunch of cash in it. And that means that the rules have been made harsh and severe to protect against the ever-present bad guys. So, like so many other things in life, where a few bad apples spoil it for everyone, cash has been banned from all real estate transactions. Your takeaway from this video it's simply that you aren't going to be able to use that cash that you have lying around unless you deposit it into your bank account and let it sit there for at least two months. You should keep records for all large deposits of cash to explain the source too, just in case you're ever questioned about the deposits. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and remember always that I'm here every day to help solve the problems that living life on life's terms sends your way. Keep my number close by so that you can reach me anytime you need my help or anytime someone you care about needs someone who will care about them as much as I care about you. See you next week.